Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this TK85 electric and hybrid vehicle technology course. Uh, now electric and hybrid is probably just about the hottest topic at the moment when it comes down to then we'll be moving on to the big area of safety when working in electric vehicles and hybrid vehicles. Uh, these things can bite if you get it wrong so we want to make sure that we've got as much information over to you as possible about the dangers uh, and perhaps some of the myths to do with working years ago, let alone when they, they first emerged. Just the amount of vehicles on the, on the road has meant that the, the vehicles do add to all the pollution that is uh, now the, uh, the problem around the world. It's the range was it just made the vehicle much heavier. And so obviously that compromised performance and handling, of course, if you were trying to make a vehicle handle. Um, obviously those, those matters have improved greatly over the years, but there is obviously still the, the problem of range anxiety, which we'll talk about uh, a little later in the course. But the thing we need to, to be clear here is this is not an evolution towards electric cars. This is a revolution. Vehicle manufacturers uh, has obviously turned people against internal combustion engines uh, somewhat. Even sort of die hard petrol fanatics are, are finding that they're you know, quite smitten by the, uh, the use of an electric vehicle. Uh, of course, in the early 2000s, diesel cars were massively improved with the introduction of uh, common rail diesel systems and so on. They became very fast, very drivable, very, very emissions friendly. So we were told at the time and we were all sold on the idea, even to the extent that certain governments need to be over the coming months and years. Now, the hard purchases are what we talk about, the actual bits, the actual hardware that we need to go and buy. So we need to consider putting charging stations in the workshop and in the car park area. We need to think about high voltage tools. We need a mega tester so that we can measure the uh, insulation on high voltage systems. We need a quality multimeter that meets the standards required for working on high voltage vehicles. Uh, there's obviously uh, danger from arc flashes where the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the spark that you get by uh, things touching together can actually cause you a, a, a flash injury or even damage your eyes, just like with, uh, with welding. Uh, obviously, the motors can bite you if you don't use the right tools to uh, assemble them. Um, and obviously there's still the, the risks of explosion and fire from the battery packs, which we'll talk a bit later on about that when we come to, uh, and the drive motors themselves, along with things like the aircon compressor and so on, that will all have high voltage cables going to them. So just be familiar with where high voltage components are on the vehicle, so as to make sure that we don't encounter a problem and accidentally electrocute ourselves. So what happens if you're electric? In general, most of these hybrid electric vehicles can uh, run on either electric or internal combustion engine power, although not all of them. Uh, things like the Honda, the early generation Honda Insight, uh, internal combustion engine power to keep you going and get you, get you home. Uh, another method of overcoming some of the problems that we've had with uh, range anxiety to do with pure electric vehicles is what we call an extended range electric vehicle, uh, such as the Vauxhall Ampere power whilst accelerating. Uh, it would also be used as a regenerative braking system as well. Uh, it is only a micro hybrid. It's not an electric vehicle by any means or, or definition because the vehicle cannot drive by electric alone, but it just means it has gone ahead and depleted the battery a bit during that acceleration. Because we're now cruising, we don't need all the power from the engine, so we can use some of that power diverted through the motor generator unit to recharge the battery pack. And this is what we call a mild hybrid, uh, additional from the engine, pure electric drive just from the main large electric motor, or a combination of electric and internal combustion engine drive to give us maximum power, maximum torque to climb hills or to accelerate for maybe 30, 40, 50 miles perhaps depending on the vehicle. Generally, we don't see such a great range from these as we do from a pure electric vehicle, quite simply because uh, we can actually use the phone to unlock the car and to lock the car, uh, just as you would with a keyless car. 
So there's lots of facilities now available with the uh, with these mobile phone apps. So on offering some really quite cheap, um, but seemingly quite good uh, electric vehicles. So reasonably, I think we can expect the engineering quality to have gone down a little bit. Uh, in other words, all of these modern electric vehicles, almost no matter which manufacturer they're from, are going to be made down to a price somewhat. And I mean, we've seen this other system because sometimes you may have a fault code uh, that, that is irrelevant or a fault code uh, that, you know, no fault code stored at all. Uh, and uh, it may be I'll down to right. So I can only recommend doing that as a, a means of helping you to learn more about the, the vehicles and, and everything that's going on with them in the, in the first place and to learn more about what is looking good. You may need to just go, go through them and uh, either write down the values that you're seeing or take a screenshot uh, and record those values so that you can then uh, 